Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Darkest Hour. I'm your host, Amanda Jane. My friends, tonight we are celebrating 4,200 subscribers. So, first of all, thank you so much, all of you, for your support and love for the show. It means the world. I've asked someone to join tonight's episode, a good friend and a fantastic narrator, Mr. Revenant. Definitely check out his channel if you haven't already. He's one of our favorites over here, so I hope you all enjoy his narrations as much as we do. So, let's get started, shall we? So this is admittedly a little shaky. There's probably a logical explanation for this, but I think it's interesting, especially given where I heard it. About two months ago, I set out to put together a book of the city's ghost stories, as, at least to my knowledge, no one else has done so. This has led to a lot of on-foot research, a lot of questions, and one or two mistakes. My sincerest apologies to the one store when I told you your place was haunted. I hadn't realized I was in the wrong place. One of the more prevalent ghost stories I've come across so far, as everyone seems to know some version of it, is of a little girl who fell through a skylight of a grocery store in the 1930s. She hit her head on a Coke machine and died the next day. It's one of the few ghost stories I've come across for the book that's rooted in history. As the little girl did actually fall, I've seen a photograph of her, I've read newspaper articles about it, and I've visited her grave. A lot of the finer points of the actual event seem to have gotten mixed up in the retelling of it. I've heard people talk about the little girl falling from the window instead of the skylight, and pointing to other buildings on the street as the ones that she'd fallen out of. Supposedly, her ghost doesn't just haunt the site of the former grocery store, but the building on either side of it, too. Anyway, I was going for a walk one morning, early, as I often do, Heading down the street, I was thinking of the cold, of the weather, and half a dozen other things besides the ghost story about the little girl. I was walking by a series of shops when I heard a noise. A terrific-sounding crash. Jumping, startled, I whirled towards the sound, only to find myself standing in front of the exact building the girl had fallen into. It's a jewelry store now. Or at least it will be, until they move out soon. Admittedly, it could have been someone working inside who dropped something. Still, the place didn't open for another two hours. It was fairly early in the morning. I almost looked in. Probably should have looked in, but didn't. Just in case it was one of those workers and not a ghost. I went on my way, rather shaken up. And have yet to hear anything else no matter how many times I walked by the building. So did I hear the ghostly replaying of the tragic accident? Or just the mishandling of a clumsy employee? I don't know, and probably never will know. But that doesn't mean I'm going to quit hoping to hear it again. I was 10 years old. Back then, my friends and I would ride our bikes as far as we could, looking for adventure or to discover something new and exciting. At this time, my community was a mix of new and old, and it was easy to find an old tunnel, the remains of a farmhouse, or decayed paths and trails. We set out that summer with one extra boy than the usual crew. I'd not formally met him yet. Nonetheless, We headed out on our bikes. We came across an abandoned house near a farmer's field and forest. We started to explore the premises and we decided to settle here for a while. We walked in, checked things out, and were just hanging out and sharing our findings. I started to hear the sound of rocks or gravel being moved through the water, emanating from the basement. I thought it was my friends playing in the house. I briefly ignored this. Suddenly there was wailing, and the sound of gravel was getting louder like thrashing. 
like someone was throwing rocks or gravel. Frozen, there was no way my friends could make that noise. Quiet, fast talking surrounded us. My one friend started to cry uncontrollably. His brother was preparing to protect his brother. Together, we could see inside the house's front hall and stairwells. The new boy was giggling and gesturing us to come downstairs by waving us in with his hand. We stood there dumbfounded. How or what? How did he not know the immediate danger we were in, that he was in? I wanted to get him, as I thought this was possibly his last moment on earth. But I watched him return up from the dark stairwell leading to the basement. He was still giggling and mirroring the exact same motion. He returned again downstairs and out of sight. We screamed at him, but he kept doing the exact same thing over and over again. He was actually speeding up, like two times, then three times faster. The noises from the basement I can only describe as pure despair like an agonizing, painful, and doom-like quality, but they were human, or at least human-like. We screamed at the boy that we were leaving, and it seemed like he was coming outside. Frantic, we just started biking as fast as possible. Petrified with fear, I couldn't look back. It was dusk now, and we had no time to reconvene. We separated immediately and went home before we were grounded. I asked my friends the next day if anyone saw the other boy. They responded that they thought he was someone else's friend from our group. We didn't even know his name or where he came from, and we never saw him again. This morning I woke up at 5 and went to the gym before class. I'm staying at my parents, but they're away for a month, so I've had the house to myself. I always wake up, let the dog out, shower, let the dog back inside before I leave. But this morning, it felt a little weird. The house had a strange energy. I let the dog out into the pitch black yard, but the deck light didn't come on, which is unusual. I brushed it off and took a shower. The dog was waiting for me when I returned. I opened the door and the large black lab walked inside and straight under the table. I then tried to go to my room, but as I was leaving, I felt the same strange feeling from when I had woken up. I looked at the dog's bed, noticed he wasn't in it, so I looked back at the door to see that he was still sitting outside. My stomach instantly dropped. I know I watched him come inside. I let my actual dog inside and searched my house to see if another animal came in, but I didn't find anything. The thing I let in before was about the right size, but it did look more like a shadow. It moved a little differently. I called my girlfriend since she was waiting for me at the gym. She thinks it was my imagination, but I've never ever imagined something this real. I wasn't even tired. My dog was also acting a little strange, staring at the wall and growling quietly. But I left soon after that. I'm at a loss. If anyone has a possible explanation, I'm really dreading sleeping there alone tonight. In 2016, my girlfriend and I decided to go on our first vacation together. We booked a three-night stay at a historic hotel in the old part of the city. It was an elegant manor-style home from the 1850s, and parts of the property looked like it was from that period. Massive staircases, parlor room, and original furniture throughout. Our first day, we did the usual touristy stuff. Exhausted, we settled into our room and crashed for the evening. Our first night, we barely slept. My girlfriend and I were both uncomfortable sleeping in the room and felt like someone was watching us. A few hours later, around 3am, 
We were abruptly woken to a very loud sound coming from above our room. It sounded like someone was pulling or pushing a large piece of furniture. The stuttering of wood on wood and the creaking was unbearably loud. This went on for a while that we were totally awake thinking someone was working upstairs like a staff member moving furniture or rearranging the room. We were both dumbfounded sitting upright in our beds waiting for this to end. On the second day, more touristy stuff and we didn't think much of the previous night. The second night, we was zonked and went to sleep early. This night was strangely similar. We woke up around the same time to the exact same creaking and stuttering of furniture or something being moved around above us. It eventually stopped like yesterday and we managed to fall back asleep. Next thing I remember is my girlfriend waking me up abruptly saying, What are you doing? I awoke, standing in the middle of the room in the dark, unpacking my bag, angrily throwing our clothes into the air. I snapped at her for asking me what I was doing and interrupting me. I was frustrated and agitated on waking. Suddenly, I vaguely remember what I was doing, almost like a dream on waking and you try to hang on to your dream. I sat on the bed and explained that I was looking for a key in the room, and I remembered wandering around the room desperately searching the walls, floors, and furniture with my hands in the dark. I was getting more disturbed the more I explained this to my girlfriend. The idea that I was alone in this dark hotel room doing this really frightened me because I had no control. Needless to say, we decided to call it early and head home and end our vacation. We drove the full four-hour drive home that night in pitch darkness and fog. I called the hotel that morning to check out early. Speaking with the front desk, I mentioned the loud noises coming from above our room. She replied, There is no room above yours. It's an attic space and no staff would have been there at that time. I mentioned that it sounded like someone was dragging furniture on hard wood. She said there was lots of furniture stored up there. I asked her if the hotel was haunted. She responded reluctantly that she has heard other similar stories. From about 2018 to 2019, I lived in an apartment by the college I was attending. It wasn't an old apartment, wasn't made out of an old house. Nothing about it seemed like it'd be the least bit haunted. I didn't really even notice all that much to make me reach that conclusion. Sure, sometimes I'd smell the same food cooking about the same time, some mornings and nights and sometimes I'd hear the sound of somebody taking a step in the living room. But I attributed both to the rooms on three sides of me. The steps could be someone above me, and the food could be anybody cooking. This to say, I never even contemplated that it was haunted until one day. This was during the 2019 spring semester. I was graduating at the end of the semester, and so the school year was ramping up and stressing me out. I became fond of taking naps during the day in order to cope with a broken sleep schedule. And oftentimes I'd just sleep during the day, laying face down on the bed in order to block out the light. One Monday I'd taken a nap. Class had either been canceled or I'd decided to skip it that day. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. That was until I blinked blearily awake with a concrete sensation that a hand was stroking my bangs. Starting from the roots and running their fingers through the tips, it felt nice, to be honest, all except the fact that I lived by myself in that apartment. As soon as I woke up enough to connect that something didn't feel right, I remember jumping up and yelling out in surprise, swearing in complete alarm. The sensation immediately went away, and I was left shaken, standing in the bedroom. I collect myself, go get supper, and try to figure out what had just happened. Upon doing some research, 
An old cabin used to be in that spot. And before that, during a battle fought in the Civil War, a tent had been placed somewhere near there for soldiers and nurses. I spent the next few months trying to figure out who it could have been and waiting to try to experience it again, but it never came again. I have no idea what it was, never experienced anything else ever again. I just wonder who it was, why they seemed so interested in my well-being. In a way, it was kind of nice, kind of sweet, and I have this weird desire to at least know who it was and what happened to them. Is that weird? It feels weird to me. My family and I were on a vacation in a hotel by the ocean. I was young, about five years old. One afternoon, we were at the hotel pool alone. My parents and brother were teasing me and wouldn't allow me into the hot tub, saying that I was too young. I became very angry and stormed off, wandering around the pool. My next memory is sitting cross-legged at the bottom of the pool. I was stuck somehow. And for some reason, I couldn't or wouldn't move. I was just sitting and looking around. I distinctly remember seeing the pool walls, and I could see the water fluttering above me. A strange sensation overcame me. I felt warm and colorful, if that makes any sense. I saw the water above me break, and an arm suddenly wrapping around me. I remember feeling the abrasive hair on the arm as it was across my body and neck. My next memory is standing beside the pool. I was perfectly fine but in shock about what happened. There was no one else around the pool, including who rescued me. I ran over to the hot tub and told my parents everything that happened. They just brushed it off. It was very confusing, surreal and vivid, but I remembered seeing the man who rescued me. He was tall, much taller than my father. He was very pale, practically white with freckles and orangey-red hair and a long face. He was also wearing a bathing suit. I remember seeing him standing beside the pool with his hand raised. I also remember him telling me to stay away from water, but I don't remember him speaking to me directly. To say the least, this has had a lasting impact on my life. I have had many other paranormal experiences, and I'm devout and thankful for my second chance. At times, I wonder if I died that day, or at least, a part of me. Maybe there are other people that feel the same. I was a single mom of three. I bought an old house that was big enough, but cheap enough, for all of us to have our own rooms. Mine was the only bedroom downstairs. I'd gotten the kids all in bed, finally, one night and came downstairs to go to bed. A nightly ritual for me was to take all of my silver rings off, put them on my nightstand. I wore about six rings, all sentimental. So I take off my rings, put them down by my lamp, turn to the bed to remove all the pillows and bedspread and grab my pajamas. I turn back to the nightstand, and all six of my silver rings were sitting up on their edge. Not laying down, all lined up in a perfect row. I thought, how in the world did I do that? So I picked them up and just tried to randomly make it happen again. Nope. And again, and nope. It was impossible to casually make them stand up, lined up. I then purposely sat them on their edge, which was a very big balance challenge. They kept falling over, knocking over the others. How and who could have done it? My name is Joseph, and I have an encounter that's puzzled me and my best friend for years. When I was in my early teens, around 14 or 15, 
Me and my buddy used to play in the woods behind what used to be my great-grandmother's old house. The woods had a little gully or gulch that we used to jump using our bikes. And a few kudzu vines that grew thick enough to swing on. Well, one June afternoon, right around 1.45, we were back there playing when we heard something running towards us. Too slow to be an animal, or at least one in the area that we lived in North Carolina, but way too fast to be human. We bolted out of the woods as fast as we could. The weird part is that nothing chased us farther than the edge of my old great-grandma's driveway. Being the stupid kids we were, we kept going back to see if we could catch whatever it was and see what it was. One night, we decided to go around midnight to see if the reason we were not catching this thing was because it was daytime, despite our terrifying encounter during the day. We gave each other a 20-minute leeway in case the other wasn't in the agreed-upon spot at midnight. Sure enough, my buddy, who we'll call Q, was late, so I did what we agreed, which, looking back now, was an idiotic idea. I yelled out his name a few times. Well, shortly after the fifth time of calling out Q's name, I heard what sounded like his voice, but not quite him. It yelled out for help. When I looked where the sound sounded like it was coming from, I saw something that was five feet tall, while on all fours, standing at the end of the street, staring straight at me. I took off running, hid under a parked moving truck for what felt like forever. The last I saw of the creature, it ran off into the woods by my great-grandma's old house. The only reason I know I didn't imagine it after I bolted into my house evidently after that my buddy came outside and the exact same thing happened to him he told me the exact same description of the thing before I could even mention it to him to this day we're in our mid-twenties now we've never entered those woods again vowed to never set foot in them again until we know what it is and if we can kill it My mom is a realtor and has shown a variety of different houses in her time working that job. About four years back, she came home from one, pale and jittery. I joke that she's looked like she's seen a ghost. She just slowly nods. Apparently, she'd been taking pictures of the house in order to put them online and had been standing in the doorway, checking through the digital camera. She's taking a while, and apparently halfway through when somebody had impatiently cleared his throat behind her. Now, she was the only one in the house, and so practically jumped through the door to get out as soon as she heard it. Standing on the front porch, she'd realized that she'd left the keys behind her, so she had to brave going back in in order to retrieve them. She ran in, grabbed the keys, and ran back out, back to the car, and back home. That's where I came in made the joke and the story enters an endless loop of retelling and retelling. Now the house. The house is old, apparently pre-Civil War, 1800s, so it's entirely possible that the house is haunted. She goes and calls the homeowner after we discussed whether to do it or not. She calls him, waffles for a bit, then asks him if his house is haunted. The man goes quiet for a long time. Finally, he asks her, Which one did you see? Apparently, there's two ghosts on the property. The ghost of a doctor, whom the wife of the homeowner saw bending over her one night to check her temperature when she was sick. The other is the ghost of the grandmother of the family who originally owned the house. She'd gone crazy for one reason or another and had been locked up in one of the upstairs rooms. There was a hole drilled through the door in order to look in and see her. People apparently have claimed to see her looking down from that room's window. Months pass as the house tries to sell, and finally, Mom has an open house on a Sunday, where over a hundred people come by to look at the house. Near the end of the day, somebody approaches her about buying it. 
She promises to begin walking them through the process. That was Sunday afternoon. Monday morning, Mom's woken up by a call from another one of the realtors telling her to turn on the TV. Sure enough, on the local news, the house is ablaze and quickly burns completely to the ground. Everybody's a little shaken, and several theories are put forward from racist to homeless people. Me? I'm firmly convinced the ghosts didn't want to give up their house that easy. And so, dealt with it the only way they could. I'd just moved into my first college apartment after a miserable year in the dorms. It was within walking distance of campus and it came with an air conditioner that refused to work. It wouldn't stop leaking and the night I moved in it didn't run at all, which was absolutely awful in mid-August. I spent most of that night awake, chugging cold drinks or sleeping fitfully, sweating buckets. In the morning... I stood in a cold shower for 30 minutes before going out to learn my way around for the new semester. There's a shortcut that shaves a couple of minutes off my walk, but I wasn't sure where it was. I decided to go the normal way to the parking lot instead of spending an hour looking for it. I headed in the general direction I knew to go, but I wasn't sure of which street to go down. Turning right, I began heading towards downtown, and that's when I heard a metallic tap, tap, tap sound. Glancing over my shoulder, I immediately saw the source. It was an old, filthy, homeless man, dressed in brown clothes with long gray hair and a beard. He was holding a white cane. Feeling slightly spooked, but not thinking much of it, I continued walking. There's a healthy number of homeless people in my city, I intentionally missed the actual turn for campus, figuring he would eventually turn off and go a different way. But he didn't, and the tapping continued. I ended up going off the sidewalk and across a gravel path, heading further downtown, hoping he'd move on. Instead, he kept walking. He never sped up or slowed down. He just kept following me with that incessant tapping. When I recognized where I was, I turned to head towards campus. I could see it growing closer in the distance. That's when I noticed the tapping had disappeared. But there was barely a moment of relief. I heard it again, and I glanced over to see that he'd taken a shortcut, and was now almost even to me, moving diagonally. I sped up and called my mother, thinking 911 wouldn't take me seriously. I was crying and overwhelmed as this man continued to follow me. Full of desperation, I ran across the road, thinking I'd finally lose him. But as I glanced back, I saw him crossing the road too. I was almost sprinting, but he continued to follow me at the same pace. Ahead of me, I saw a band practicing. I hoped that he wouldn't want to walk in front of a whole trumpet line, but I was wrong. When I finally made it to campus, I continued sprinting until I could look back long enough to confirm he was gone. It seems he didn't want to go into the college. After having a little cry, I wandered into the game room before heading home. This was several months ago, and also my first time living alone, so I guess it's possible I'm blowing things out of proportion, but there were times when I felt like they didn't need to keep following me or that they didn't need to re-follow me. Either way, I've never ran into them since, but I only take the shortcut now. Recently, I felt something following me around, everywhere. I always feel like someone's watching me. I feel a hand on my shoulder, or a head, when there's nothing there. So, I keep seeing this thing when I'm outside. It doesn't talk usually, but I keep seeing it wherever I go. 
It's always behind a tree or hiding. When I was younger, I used to go outside to swing next to the huge tree, and I kept seeing a shadow figure stick its head out. But whenever I actually looked at it, it disappeared. It doesn't hurt or scare me. Sort of like a father. It comforts me, and yes, it may be an imaginary friend, but feels real. I keep feeling it, touch my shoulder. I feel it next to me, always beside or behind me. When I sleep and face the wall, I feel it behind me. There are times when I see it or hear it in the closet or in the hallway at night. But it doesn't harm me. It doesn't harm me and it says it brings no threats. It's comforting to me. Talk to it sometimes. During school, I write about it, draw about it. I might be crazy, but it looks so real and feels so real. It's super tall, no face, no accessories, nothing on it. A shadow figure, really skinny. I can almost see its bones. It has a sort of low, raspy voice. It's nice and kind. It's never made me feel threatened or scared. I feel happy, relaxed, and welcome it. I can never touch it, though, but it can touch me. If I try to touch it, it fades away. It's not around me all the time, but it comes to me when I feel stressed out or scared. No one else seems to see him but me, but I know I see it. Also, I just don't see him behind trees. Sometimes, when I swing, I see him next to the road. Once, I saw him next to the road somewhere else, but it was signaling for me to follow it. I'm not sure if he's a ghost, a bad spirit, a good spirit, imaginary friend, a shadow person, or anything else. Anyone who knows more about ghosts or might have an idea what this is, please tell me. I don't want to get rid of it, but if you think I should, please tell me that too. Well, friends, it appears we've reached the end of tonight's episode, but don't miss a brand new one every Friday and my other videos every Sunday and Wednesday. I want to thank those who shared their stories and a big thanks to all of you for listening. Also, thanks again to Mr. Revenant for joining me on this episode. Don't forget to check out the link in the description for his channel. Do you have stories like these? I'd love to share them. Send them to me. Amanda darkest hour at gmail.com a huge shout out to all of my patrons thank you guys so much for your unwavering support it means the world tracy s tamra k monica l zoe watt shelly b donald c rat girl alicia s aaron g nikki h mr revenant naz k brendan g paul t nicholas c lizanne Arlene F., and Adrian. You all are the best. Thanks again. If you want to support the show in other ways, consider joining my Patreon, patreon.com slash thedarkesthour. Thanks, everyone, and stay spooky. <laughs>